like what are you feeling here like what is your what is your like that, that like that to me is the problem solving that you have to have in this dance right in tango like you have to be able to look at this and be like all right so the way he does it or she does it how do they do it am i doing it like that like what do i need to do to do more of that right how do i become more of that all right we are back and today's topic is on becoming a better tango student now uh, we already covered just how difficult learning tango could be and through our accumulative years le experience learning tango we have some insight on our own experiences on how to learn better and just i think how to be more effective in learning um so i guess one of the most important advices i think i got rob in the beginning was that every teacher has some sort of value right that um, and there's kind of this kind of conundrum, right? When you start, like, do you start with one teacher and become like an apprentice to some master teacher? Or do you kind of take one teacher and then survey the landscape and then kind of like pick up the different things, different nuances from everyone else? Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, it's, this is a difficult one to answer because everyone learns differently. You know, for example, I had a really difficult time learning. I'm not the, the fastest person. And sometimes I needed to hear it from maybe seven different teachers saying the same exact thing, but maybe about like a difference in tone or a difference in metaphors, but somewhere something clicked for that one teacher and something might click for another teacher in another aspect. So uh, I was a person who probably took lessons from almost every single person in, in Los Angeles and also from a lot of different visiting teachers. So uh, it's hard to say because it's, it really depends on how you learn. And sometimes, you know, it, it's really frustrating, especially for me when I was trying to learn and things just weren't sticking because I didn't understand it. I think for me, <clears throat> I started with, um, I started with Brian and then um, obviously Johnny also helped me as we were learning together. And I stuck with him for a good, you know, a good amount of time in the beginning. And then he actually wanted me to branch out. And so I did. And I think what's interesting is that in tango, I think a lot of people get bummed out and they expect, they have high expectations of where they should be given how much time they put into to dancing tango. And unfortunately there's not really a strong correlation. Uh, it just, it's just, it's an interesting dance because sometimes things just click out of nowhere just for, for no reason, you just have no idea, all of a sudden it just makes total sense and like something shifts in your mind and all of a sudden you're like, wow, I just, how come I wasn't doing that for yeah. the longest time, <laughs> right? Yeah, or sometimes like, you know, you just decide you're hitting your head with a hammer on this one thing and then sometimes you just sit back, step away from Tango for a month and you come back and somehow it magically appears. So sometimes it happens like that too. So say when you go to a tango class or a tango group class, we'll go there. What do you think is the best way to learn the fastest in a group class setting? Because group classes are, it's hard to get a lot because you're usually rotating a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of just partner only classes. I know they're out there, but we're just taking the normal standard tango class where it's just random people. You don't come with a partner. Well, what would you say that your best way of taking information from a class group class? Oh, well, that's really tough because generally in the very beginning, um, there's a lot of figures that's being taught. And, uh, you know, it's really, it's really easy to consume figures and just go, oh, I know the Baldosa, I know the Salida Basica, I know the Salida Basica del 40, or, and then I know the Hero Consagada or something like that. So it's really difficult to say. So, um, I think if anything, it's to recognize that a figure is there and a figure is a training tool for you to practice your technique. So the technique might not be blatantly set out in the open saying, uh, the teacher might not say, hey guys, don't forget our transfer away here or something along those lines, but that's really for you to decide uh, or to really pick that up and use the figures as a training tool. Yeah, because I think people go down as a checklist, right? And I think that's totally natural. Yeah. I think in the beginning, and I, I'm speaking from a leader perspective, of course, uh, I actually followed mostly to, to start with, but from a leader's perspective, 
I think we do kind of want to survey the landscape, understand what's out there. Like you want to learn Baxacadas, you want to learn like Kihiros, you want to learn Roskes, you want to learn all these, all these things. And it's kind of like a checklist until you get to the point where like, all right, I know all these things, but am I doing it with any, you know, quality? Mm, yes. Right? That's the, that's the answer, right? That's the question. Like when, 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 how can I do it efficiently and nicely with everyone I dance with? And therein lies the technique issue, right? And so I think when you go into a group class, <clears throat> I think for me, the best part of is asking yourself questions like, all right, the teacher is teaching this thing, why? Like, what, why are they teaching this particular thing? What are they trying to get out of this particular topic that they're telling us as a student, right? Sure, they're showing you how to do something, but what is really a takeaway thing that like, oh, really the thing here is this transfer of weight here, how to shoot, how to shift from the split weight, whatever, right? That's, I think that's my, was always my approach is to think, to ask myself, all right, what is the underlying thing that they're really trying to get at? They're telling me, but they're not telling me. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing that is, um, don't knock on the practice embrace. You know, a lot of people, when they, when they learn the embrace, it's like, oh, here, here's embrace. I'm going to do everything in the embrace. And they kind of think, yeah, I don't need to practice embrace more because you know I'm beyond that. Yeah. So I, I would say don't knock the practice embrace and really use it in everything before you transfer to the embrace and do things slowly. Like, um, you know, get to one point and kind of check yourself. Hey, um, you know, is my you know am I on, am I on balance? Is my weight transfer right? Am I extending enough? Uh, am I is my turnout correct so that I could disassociate correctly or anything like that. Um, I think a lot of those things are really important when it comes to learning because many times, especially myself, you know, you're, I'm so fixated on the figure that I'm running. It's like, bop, 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 I got it, you know? Yeah. It's like, boom, boom, left, right, left, boom, boom, yeah. boom. I'm like, you, you know, you know the know. sequence, the order, the correct order of the sequence, but you don't know mechanically how every part of it's done. Yeah, and that's really the problem is that it's really easy to like muscle your way through the sequence. Mm. Um, and I think that's that's one of the problems that I had because I muscled through the sequences. Uh, it wasn't clean, it wasn't perfect, but in my head, it's like, hey, I made it across the finish line. You know, I got it. And I don't think that's the right attitude to have. Um, it's it's very easy to have that attitude, especially when you, with like beginner's ego because everyone's saying, oh, you're doing so great, you're doing so great yeah, because yeah. everyone's giving you confidence because they want you to keep on going and taking classes and pushing and sticking with tango, but uh, it's really easy to like get your ego inflated and then think you're getting it and just muscling through stuff. Well, how, what about the followers out there? Because um, I would say that more followers take classes than leaders in general, mm -hmm. right? Across the board. I would, I would, I would say that. Would I, I would say, I would say that in Los Angeles, Okay. Um, you know, I think people will take more classes if it's more competitive. Mm -hmm. um, for example, there are way more followers in Los Angeles than, than, than leaders. True. So generally you'll see a lot more followers and a lot more ladies in classes. But let's say you take a place like in San Francisco. When I went to San Francisco and I dropped in for a beginner's class, I saw a lot of men, you know, and I think being a lead in San Francisco, it's very competitive because generally there are more men in San Francisco than there are, than are, than are ladies. Okay. Well, but besides, despite this disparity, Knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. what's your best advice you would give to a follower taking group classes? Mm. You know, first I would say that, um, you know, I think a lot of people focus a lot on the teachers. Like, are their teachers teaching well, right? Are these good teachers? Uh, generally, there are a lot of good teachers, but I think what's also really important is that are there experienced dancers there for you to practice with, mm. because sometimes you know there you are get stuck with some, you know, well, no, Joe not, Schmo. Well, is not, that what you're well, there's that, but it's but what I'm saying is that like that's a place for you to make your, that connection and practice later. Because generally, when you take a class, you might think you've got the figure, but you don't have the technique. Right. So you need someone to take you to the finish line, and that's going to be after class, practicing at the practica in your kitchen, wherever it is, mm -hmm. at 24 Hour Fitness wherever it is. But if that's the benefit for a follower, why even take a group class if you can just use that in the practical? Uh, because I think there are things that teachers can actually look at 
and explain because a lot of people will just say, oh, the followers, it's just, you know, just follow, right? right. Um, but there's a lot of technique that a follower has to do. She has to maintain her balance. She has to have a, the right extension. She has to know how to give and take in like how much, like, you know, how much the energy that leader is giving her. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that can be taught through the teachers. And a lot of that is taught, um, not in, in like the universal instructional class, but when the teachers go around and look at people one by one, they give those little tidbits to the followers. That's true. So I wouldn't knock on, I wouldn't knock on um, group classes saying that followers don't need them because they could just go to a practica. Because a follower can go to a practica, pick up a practice partner, but that practice partner might not have the insight to know what the follower is doing or not doing. Unless you're, unless you happen to pick up a pro who's giving you a private lesson for it, you know. <laughs> and that's your fastest way to speed up the angle. <laughs> yeah. Think, you know, Take lessons. your nearest pro and have practice with them all the time. Yeah, but but I mean, really, like I mean, that's, <laughs> but but really, it's like someone who could guide you through everything, mm -hmm. and if that person doesn't have like, I can kind of do that now with some people because my experience. Right. But you know, five years ago when I was like a seven-year dancer. I might think I could, but the answer is no, you know? I, I might have an idea of like, oh, she's not pivoting enough, or no, your extension's wrong. I might have these ideas, but then it's like, you know, then do I, am I mature enough to communicate that well with a partner? Am I mature enough to get the feedback and go, hey Rob, maybe you're wrong, you know? Uh, so that's where I think that group classes are a great place for followers, not only to find these leaders to practice with, but to leverage the experience of the teachers to really, you know, to really uh, hone in their skills as a follower. What's interesting to me is that I, I don't think people ask enough questions in group classes. And this comes from my experience uh, learning tango, teaching tango, and just overall experiences in workshops and all these kinds of things. I feel like not enough people ask the precise questions. Um, there are people that ask questions that are just random, off topic, and I guess maybe that's what deters some people yeah. from asking questions because you get the person's like, you know, like, well, you know, what's the what is the sequence again? Like those kind of questions. Yeah. I'm talking about the questions of like, you know, trying to get into the mentality of the instructor. Like, what are you looking for when you're about to take this thing? What What are you feeling here? Like, what is your what is your like that? that like that to me is the problem solving that you have to have in this dance, right, in tango. Like you have to be able to look at this and be like, all right, so the way he does it or she does it, how do they do it? Am I doing it like that? Like, what do I need to do to do more of that, right? How do I become more of that? Like, how do I, how to become grounded? Like those kind of things, right? That was just an abstract term for so much, for so long and so many years. How do I become more grounded? Like, and so it was all about my own journey of learning all these different ways of me saying, well, is it this? Is it me bending more? Is it me using my hamstring? Is it me like using what, like all these things, right? Thinking about groundedness. And so I thought that really is tango. Looking at what the problem is and uh, trying to dis uh, solve the answer for yourself. I feel also too many people look for the answer for the instructors mm -hmm. way too early without doing any of the work themselves. Right? But they were like, like they try it one time in class and be like, oh, uh, instructor, help me. Can you show us again? Can you do it with me? Am I doing it right? Like, can you try it and actually try it first? Yeah, well. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm a little guilty of that. because <laughs> like five no. seconds, like, I, I, I'm, okay, I'm lost, can you help me? No, no, because, you know, sometimes it's like, because, you know, I was a figure junkie. I, I wasn't a technique guy, I was a figure junkie, meaning that, uh, for those of you who don't know what a figure junkie is, it's basically, I like my Legos, and I like to slap them together, and I like the whole bunch of sequences. You mean all the combinations? Yeah, so if you know all the combinations, like, <laughs> it's a winning, it's a, it's a winning <laughs> step, right? You know, so that's that was my mentality. Um, and it's really easy to just kind of go, wait, what was the sequence again? What was the figure again? So, you know, it's very easy to fall into that trap if you're a figures junkie. Um, so I think that's the first thing, you know, again, going back to um, the figures are there as a training tool. Don't think of it as like the end all be all. So uh, yeah, it's definitely want to hone on on that. Because when you think about the sequence, you start breaking down the sequence into like, I step here with my left and then right and the left. And, but that's not the essence of what makes the sequence 
flow together. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because it's about the, the movement. It's about how you create the movement together with your partner. That's more important. But if you think about individual steps, that's kind of what doesn't really lead to the free flowingness of what the dance can be. Yeah. Um, I guess, what are some like common questions that you would ask a teacher? Because like, I, I feel like sometimes, you know, in, in the beginning, I would just freeze because I would just go, I don't even know what to ask because it's way over my head. So like, just to get people into the mindset of asking questions, what is like a good first one or two questions just to ask to get the ball rolling for people? Like I would ask people, I would ask them like, you know, well, in this movement, like how, what is it, what do you do to initiate the movement? Like what is the first, what is the first thing you focus on, on in, uh, sending this impulse or whatever it is that you create the movement with? Is it from the ground? Is it from something like, what is it like? Is it from your, the embrace? Like what part of your, like how does it feel in the embrace? Like what are you changing? Like these are the questions that I like to ask if I have my own time with the instructor. Right, just kind of things like that. The process questions, right? Ask yourself, you know, what is their process? Why do they like? What do they th like? What are their? What is their intuition uh, of creating this thing? Like, what is the feeling? Like, can you sh can you show me? Like, what is it? What is it? Well, like, how to create this uh, feeling better? For yeah. example. So uh, that's an interesting question. It's like you know, you talk about feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a really abstract thing because like you know, what what I feel isn't necessarily what the follower feels. True. You know, so I guess, you know, going down back to that is, um, what are you trying to produce? Yeah, I guess that's one thing I would ask is, what are you trying to produce? You know, are you, because we're talking about feeling, but sometimes uh, some teachers will talk about emotions, like, you know, uh, you know, you wanna, I don't, I don't necessarily, like, you wanna, have like a stronger stance they might say like you know, use like anger here or something like that mm. to to power through it or something along those lines mm. so uh, i've had i've had some teachers where they they um they'll use things like elements like I, i've heard let's say uh fire and water yeah no i'm, I'm not kidding <laughs> i know heart captain planet to the rescue no i mean i'm not kidding I, i've heard this stuff I, it gets a, it gets a little too like uh it gets a little too like foo foo for me but but no, I've heard. But in a sense, like you know, everyone communicates differently, and sometimes uh, that works for like let's say a more new age crowd, who are more in touch with the yoga side or whatever. Um, sometimes, you know, people like in my um, in my scenario class, we do a lot of we do a lot of theater um, exercises. A lot of it is to add emotional value into our dance. Yeah. And you know that's something that's really interesting because you know, you could just walk in cadence. And is that really tango? It's it's something that resonates resonates within you, right? Yeah. It's it's this difficult concept of musicality, right? It's it's very personal. It's very, um, yeah. It's just deeply personal, deeply yours, and uh, it's very <laughs> abstract and difficult to to describe the resonance so that you feel like like when you watch a movie and you feel something. Like how do you gen you generate that same feeling when you hear certain parts of a song or certain lyrics if you know the words right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same same concept. Right? Yeah, it is, and that's why like um, in some of the classes I'm taking now, it's really interesting because they'll say, okay, picture you are this character, you're like you're like James Bond or something like that. Mm -hmm. How would James Bond dance to this this song? Right. And then and you hear the music and you're like, and I would think, how would Bond do that? Like how would I? More confidence, yeah, more swagger. You know, yeah, or... and then. You know, I'd, I'd have that, I'd, I'd do subtle things and the teachers would see it. And yeah. I'm like, and that's the thing. It's like, there's all those, there's all those little small nuances. Cause you have to believe it yourself. Yeah. If you don't believe it, then yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't resonate with no, you. No, of course. But, but in a sense it's, it takes, I guess sometimes it's a fake it till you make it kind of a thing for me. Okay. Because, um, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of, um, experience, uh, exploring my emotions mm. you know so that was that was a really good insight for me to really explore these things and to think of these characters and how would I portray this character it's easier for me to act like James Bond than to than to like be confident Rob I'm like what does that mean you know <laughs> am, am I not confident you know like <laughs> you know so uh, so it, it's very it's very but then you think of like you know well analogies work we it, know this it, it does but uh, but that's what I mean. Like sometimes it takes that acting exercise for me to to tap into that 
that resonance that that can be used for tango mm -hmm. and i and i think that's um that's something that's really interesting and it's i think when we talk about tango like the qual we should talk about more about the quality and to to be a better student it's to focus on what quality you're trying to display not necessarily the figure the figure is great you know as a training tool but we but Every, if every movement is just a direction or a pivot and or, you know, yeah. with a relationship, we got to talk about quality. Right. And I think that's, as a student, I think that would be a good question. Like, what kind of quality comes in this? Like, why am I doing an ocho this way? Yeah. Um, you know, what am I trying to say with this ocho? Or what am I trying to stay with this forward step? Am, why, why am I hanging here? I said, or, or why am I falling fast? Why have I, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think to think about things in an emotional range uh, would definitely, or for the lead's perspective, because I think with men, um, it's very easy to be object oriented. Yeah. You know, we love gadgets, right? Of so I need the new fancy gadget. So in a sense, I need more figures. Yeah. I need more and more figures. I was lucky my first partner, Rochelle, was, um, she was good. And like, I asked her like, well, when I do all these fancy things, does it, does it feel like, is it awesome, like more amazing? And she was like, no, it feels all the same. And that really just like opened my mind early on. Like, well, the fancy stuff, isn't this like BMW car analogy, right? Isn't, yeah. isn't this thing I have to strive to get the Lamborghini or whatever. Yeah. It's more about the quality of movement, right? Yeah. And so I early on, I kind of learned, yeah, it's not about the fancy stuff. And I think the, the sooner you get out of that mind, because I think we all have to go through it. I think we, I think it's a necessary phase. I don't think it's possible to start this day like tango and, and not kind of want to be like, I got to learn volcadas, I got to learn and roll skates and like, I don't think you can get, I don't think you can pass that phase. You, I think it's like a must, it's a must phase you have to go through. Like, you know, it's like a rite of passage. It's a rite of passage. Rite of passage, you know? You don't, Guys, you don't level sorry. through, you don't level up unless you go through that passageway. Well, you know, if there's any advice that I would give to a beginner, I, I think I think it's this. It's, if, if we think about our love languages, right? Yeah. And what I mean by that is, men are object oriented. Right. Ladies are, you know, I would say, generally, generally speaking, don't, don't kill me here. <laughs> you know, oh generally, they are, you know, generally, uh, they are more nurturing, insightful, more in tune with their emotions, things like that. That, that is their, okay. their language of love, right? Okay. Like, um, you know, like, get a guy a place that he's happy, right? Okay. Get a woman something nice. It has to be presented in a nice way. It has to be done in a nice way. It has to be... You know, ha like everything has to align because it's not the object; it's it's the, the intent. Behind yeah, it, yeah, it's the intent, the work behind <laughs> all that stuff. So you know, and, and I think it's really it's really easy for men just to go, oh, if I don't give her more stuff, I'm gonna be boring, and then that, then that comes the trap. The trap is more figures, more moves, more ganchos, more cicadas. Instead of, hey, let's take this one thing and present it in different ways. So you're pretty much blaming all the followers and women. No, I'm not blaming anything. I'm blaming on the guys. I'm blaming. I, 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 I'm, I'm blaming they just on myself. Want more and more. No, I'm blaming myself. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that, like, uh, like, what I'm saying is that we are not speaking in their language to be interesting. Mm. You know, because the focus for me uh, in the beginning was, okay, I want to be interesting. I want to be a good dancer. I want to get all the dances I want. Yeah. Right. So what do I do? More figures, more figures, more figures. Show me that right? advanced. I'm gonna show yeah. you. Yeah. You know, do that back saccata. I'm chasing that back saccata. Yeah. But what do they really want? You know, they, they want don't... a nice embrace. They yeah. want a nice feeling. They want, you know, nice musicality, in tune, synchronicity. So it's the presentation and the thoughtfulness behind what you can do. Yeah. Not what you're chasing. Right. And I think, you know, if anything, that's the one advice I would impart on is don't worry about, you know, Think about what what makes a lady happy as a lead, you know, mm -hmm. and drop the objects, drop the figures, because that's that's what makes guys happy, you know. And if you focus on that, your partnership might survive a little longer. That's true, and it, but the quality again is the hard part, right? It's yeah. kind of like you know, it's the Karate Kid, right? It's painting the fence, right? Yeah. It's like you gotta <laughs> go out there and paint that fence, and then come back ten years later and show me that you can. Yeah, but then we'll know, learn karate. But that's the thing, though. It's like 
you know, the, the faster you get on that track, the faster you'll get better. And, you know, anything, anything worth doing isn't easy. That's so true. might as well do it. That's true. All right. So this has definitely been an interesting discussion. Probably be like several parts to this, but let us know what you think in the comments on your own learning process and where you are. Are you in the figure junkie stage of, of your tango career? Um, do you love uh, simple stuff? And just let us know in the comments. We'd be look, uh, we will be interested to hear. But uh, nonetheless, thank you all again for watching. We are Left Foot, Right Foot. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you all so much for watching. If you can, please click that notification bell so you can get all the updates from our channel. It will go a long way to help us support uh, the video and content we want to create for all of you. And we want to keep making better content. So yes, click that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.